First up on the agenda is Thomastown and Diamond Creek, uh, two teams whose form differs uh, quite a bit across uh, the start of 2011. Thomastown uh, hasn't recorded a win just yet. Diamond Creek, uh, disappointing on the weekend against Lowell Plenty. I think uh, most pundits would have thought it would be a pretty close game, but Lowell Plenty really uh, took it away from them in the second quarter and, and uh, got the job done. I think they'll be able to bounce back I think, against Thomastown, and for mine, they'll probably be far too strong on the weekend. Yeah, look, and probably the, the most worrying thing for, uh, for Thomastown is that um, I believe Chris Horman is, uh, is a, a long-term injury. I'm, look, I've heard different reports. It's a, I've heard broken arm, broken wrist, and, and I believe it's a, a finger injury, but it's going to be a long-term one, which is no good. So, look, he's a, he's a huge loss because along with uh, Big Mick Manley, they're, 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 those two are the, are the real heart and, and soul of, uh, of Thomastown. So... That is uh, that's going to be a huge loss for them. Diamond Creek, they uh, look, they started really well against uh, against Lower Plenty and, and led at quarter time. Had a reasonable second quarter and they just got uh, overrun in the in the third quarter. It was to a two goal to eight third mm. quarter. Lower Plenty just absolutely uh, smashed them. Diamond Creek again came out and kicked seven in the last quarter, so they finished pretty well. So I think if you take away that one quarter. Diamond Creek have, uh, have had a really good game against a, against a terrific side in Lower Plenty, so um, I'm expecting them to uh, to get the job done pretty easily. Luke Simpson and Brett, Brett Gutterson both kicking five last week. Um, so, uh, look, so they're, they're good players that are playing good footy, and uh, that's always a really good sign, Quinn. I even just said with, uh, with Dymo, with, uh, they've got a nice spread of goal kickers pretty consistently, so when you've got a handful of players kicking goals, it's always tough to stop. And um, for Thomastown, they're still searching for their first win this year, and Probably wouldn't give them too much of a, a shot, unfortunately, this week. But no, I don't think so. Look, they're, I mean, they're, they're trying the right things, and look, they've been missing quite a few players. I think they've had 15 changes to the senior team in in in, uh, in the last three weeks, and, and you just without that stability uh, and without the uh, the core group of senior players, it's always going to be pretty hard to get the job done. But look, they'll keep plugging away. They're a terrific uh, club, and, and I'm sure they'll uh, they'll get back on track eventually. Well, the next game is probably the most mouth-watering game in Division 2 for the round. It uh, really is one I'm looking forward to. It's Fitzroy Stars up against Epping. Both sides really wanting a win to actually crack the top four. Of course, we spoke uh, yesterday to Lionel Proctor, and he, even he said he's looking forward to it. And, and I think his team needs to make a statement. He did say, of course, they want to be playing finals this year, and uh, they've had a few years with the going backwards rather than pushing forward. And This is probably one game where they can really stamp themselves on the competition. Uh, Epping was good last week against... Probably an understrength Munda and a team who's having a few problems off field, and uh, other than that, they were disappointing in rounds one and two. Uh, so, that, having said that, they're going to want to get a win on the board, make it two in a row, and uh, really kickstart their season. But I think at home, I'm uh, going to go for Fitzroy Stars. I think they've got uh, the quick legs, and uh, I think they can get the job done on Victoria Park. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a close one either way. I'm probably just leaning towards uh, Epping, I think, but not not by a lot. Uh, really pleasing for uh, the stars last week was that uh, Peter Shepherd, for Layla, who's just been in awesome form, was only held to four goals. So that, that's a great sign. At the other end, Kane Cooper, who's uh, you know a medium forward type midfielder, he kicked five himself. Uh, he, he was, I think, he was dropped the week before, so that's uh, he might not have been dropped. He might have been away, but uh, he didn't play either, either way. Uh, and then I look at the best players for the stars last week: Kane Cooper, Lionel Proctor, Damian Walker, Mangara Brown, Andy Lovett, and Kalen Brown. Um, I, I mentioned before about uh, the West Preston best players, the Fitzroy Stars best players. That's six of the best players going around in Division Two. So, really good signs for the stars. Um, Epping Willett's seven goals last week, so that's a super effort, and he's just he's he's so exciting to watch. Hollow four to Tino, little Adrian to Tino four, who I think uh, age is one of the most underrated players going around. Um, look, it's going to be a really really good contest. I just think Epping will have the bigger bodies and uh, and will be able to handle the big surface out there in the big park pretty well. Yeah, by all accounts, for our Fitzroy last week, you know they did go down to Layla were were pretty good. I think we've, is what we've heard from that. And so when they've got that run, they'll always be tough to stop. And Epping, after sort of having a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde sort of thing going on, when we saw them a couple, three weeks ago now, it was the match of the day, they were pretty easily beaten by Lower Plenty on the day, but then obviously winning by 100 plus last week is a massive improvement. But um, just I think the pace of Fitzroy could trouble them in a pretty tight game. Uh, Lower Plenty and Hurstbridge is the next ca uh, game on the agenda. Uh, Lower Plenty have taken everything before them. Uh, and they're really setting themselves uh, for a big year in, in Division 2. Uh, the big man down forward, Darcy Barton, is bagging a lazy eight goals on the weekend. He was huge against Epping as well, uh, making it for a fantastic trio down there with uh, 
Andy Nee and also oh, Benjamin Gill's probably a quartet because Billy Barden's in there as well, so they're pretty hard to stop when they get going. Hurstbridge have Nathan Grimes down forward who's actually kicked quite a few goals. I think it's 14 uh, to go so far this year, but a lot of plenty of those names up forward. I think just about any team in the competition is going to struggle to man them, and, and I think that they'll win this one by about six or seven goals. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the battle of the small ground specialists uh, this week. Both clubs uh, have really small home ground surfaces, playing fields. Um, I think I think Lower Plenty will be pretty hard to beat. You mentioned the goal kickers, and, and you know, speaking of Ben Gill, I mean, he won the uh, Division Two goal kicking in the league last year, but the year before that he won the Division Three goal kicking. So uh, he, he certainly knows where to find him. But he's playing third string at the moment behind the Barden boys. Great sign for Lower Plenty. Uh, for Hurstbridge, speaking of goal kickers, Jack Donnelly, the young 19-year-old, has come up and kicked five goals. I think he was only brought into the team uh, on the weekend. So uh, that's great signs. And uh, his old boy, uh, Big Cooter, the, the president, would have been wrapped. I'm not sure if Cooter's pulled some strings and just said, get him in the goal screen and leave him one out. But, um, look, that's terrific. I, I'm wrapped with the way Hurstbridge have gone about it so far this year. They, uh, they'll they be really pleased with their start of the year. They're 2-1. Uh, they're after uh, after three rounds, which coming up from Division Three is a fantastic effort. Um, I can't see them uh, troubling Lower Plenty too much though this week, Quinny. Uh, same same for mine, unfortunately, JC. They have been good to start the season, Hurstbridge especially, as you said, coming up from uh, from Divi Three. But well, Plenty have been pretty pretty unstoppable so far, though, especially when we saw them they were fantastic. And yeah, the Barton brothers down forward are really dangerous and. Probably should win a pretty comfortable five or six goals, you think. And the final game of Division Two is Mernda hosting Laylor. Uh, it's hard to, to actually express what to think of this one. It could get ugly the way the two sides have been playing. As much as you hate to say it, Laylor obviously is in some great form, but at the other end of the spectrum, Moon is probably struggling a bit at the uh, at the moment. Uh, Laylor, of course, wanting to really challenge Lord Plenty and stay at the top of the ladder uh, with the four wins, and I think uh, they were disappointing in the third term from all reports on the weekend, but they really they got the job done in the last 10 minutes when, uh, when they had to, and they went 27 points down turned that into a 17-point win, so they piled the goals on pretty quickly against the pretty uh, pretty good Fitzroy Stars outfit, and I don't think they'll have a, any problem with Mernda this weekend. The first game on the agenda in Division 3 is St Mary's up against Heidelberg West. Uh, St Mary's, uh, I don't know what to make of them so far this year, a bit inconsistent uh, against Heidelberg West. You always have to go with St Mary's, I think, in this fixture, but uh, St Mary's one team, pretty consistent. They're hard to tip for against last week, they... Uh, Parkside was just far too good, but when you look at the, the score sheet, it does read uh, final scores 92 to 57. So about you know a six goal loss. They were down by six goals a quarter time. So afterward, uh, Parkside decided that I really rate, and they were able to uh, to stay with them for three quarters. But just that inconsistent first quarter probably cost them, and uh, it's something they probably need to address uh, going forward with this season. Oh, spot on. Look, they uh, <coughs> they just felt they, they didn't show up until quarter time. They kicked five points in the first quarter, no goals. After quarter time, though, uh, Parkside uh, eight goals six, and uh, St Mary's actually kicked seven goals ten. So they've just about gone with them. Um, some really good signs for uh, for the borough, St Mary's. Uh, the uh, the three or some of the Epping boys who have come across, uh, Big Matty Soul, Cullen, and uh, and Paddy have played some pretty good footy, particularly Matt Soul. Um, and uh, and look, they're, they're going about it the right way. Um, they're playing some some good disciplined footy. Uh, Heidelberg West. Yeah, look, I, I, I'm glad they got within 100 points of South Marine because I thought it was going to be a bit of a massacre. But um, look, they, uh, there's not much you can say about Heidelberg West because they're just uh, they're just playing along. Luke James is, uh, is still trying to do uh, a lot of the work uh, by himself. And, and look, they've got a couple of really good young kids. Cavalieri's kicked three on the weekend and, and been pretty good. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it's uh, it's a reasonably close game. But down there at Ford Park, I, I think St Mary's. South Moraine Reservoir is the next game we'll take a look at. Uh, both sides probably didn't perform to the standards they won last week. You did mention that South Moraine did get a 70-point win. Uh, they were playing against Heidelberg West, so it was probably a game they expected to definitely win. And perhaps full credit to Heidelberg West for, for hanging in there. Uh, Reservoir nearly nearly lost to Watson in the weekend. Only a five-point win, and uh, it was really close. And they're probably lucky in the end to uh, get away with the four points. Uh, so probably two sides who expected... Uh, Probably maybe an easier game than what they got. Uh, Reservoir is one of those other sides that they're very hard to judge this year. They uh, got the win first up, and then of course had a, a bit of a not a heavy loss, but a disappointing loss in round two. So uh, I might go for the South Morang in this one. I think uh, 
Reservoir, I don't know what to make of them, so I'm just not too sure if I'm confident in backing them this week. And I think South Morang's just got the uh, slightly better form going into this round four fixture. Yeah, uh, look, and, and the interesting thing with South Morang is that they trailed at uh, they trailed at half time to Oldenburg West, and uh, and at, and at three quarter time they're only up by ten points. So they've come out in the last quarter and had a twelve goal last quarter. Uh, New begin kicks seven for the day. I'd, I'd be interested to see how many he had in that last quarter. So. Look, hopefully they can take that confidence with them into this game. Um, yeah, the, the Mustangs, the Reservoir, uh, look, that they, they would be uh, very, very relieved to have uh, snuck across the line against Watsoni. No one expected Watsoni to win that one. And, and look, I, I know that the Saints were really disappointed not to get the pickies for the first time in a couple of years. But um, full credit to them for, uh, for serving it up to them. Um, goal kickers again for Reservoir, Georgie Eski with four, and uh, the man who looks like Ray Rabs were on with a red face, Braden White, he's kicked four also. So... Um, Look, what's only doing something wrong to let uh, Brayden White kick for? But um, some good signs for uh, for Reservoir. They uh, that some of their better players were amongst the, uh, amongst the best. Uh, Doherty and, and Andy White in particular. So uh, they really need those two guys firing uh, if they're going to challenge the better teams. And, and it'll be a great test for both uh, Meringue and uh, and Reservoir. Quinny? Yeah, South Bank will be looking to prove they're a genuine sort of a contender this year. So against Reservoir, who are another one who would put themselves in that sort of bracket. It's a good test for both of them. And uh, Reservoir as well, Singles sort out their kicking last week, I think they kicked 18, 18 5 or 6 mm-hmm. last week, but the week before though I think 4, 4 15 4 or something, 15, pretty, yeah. pretty terrible, so it was nice to see them sort that out, and um, you quickly touched on Watsonia as well, which was, was good, because we uh, <coughs> sort of probably a bit unfairly put a bit of acid on them on the, uh, the pre-game show last weekend, but it was really good to see them almost get their first win for better season and a half and look like they're improving massively. And look, they've got the bye this week, sorry to cut you off here, yeah. Samuel, so that, they'll be uh, they'll be chewing on that for a couple of weeks now, what's on here, and, and I'm tipping they'll come out Saturday week uh, and just uh, have all cylinders firing. Well, it's Heidelberg West in round five that they take on, so uh, there you go, yeah. every chance of getting a victory. And the final round, uh, final game rather, of this week is top of the table clash, it's Parkside up against Panton Hill, both sides uh, with the two wins on the board and have both had a bye. Uh, Panton Hill would come into this one after a two-week break, had the Easter break, and of course a buy last weekend. So that's probably not ideal, probably a bit too long away uh, from, from football. Parkside having a good week, a good win rather, on the weekend. They've been pretty impressive so far, Parkside, for mine. They've conceded seven goals against St Mary's, and only four against Reservoir in two weeks. So only 11 goals against. Uh, having said that, they have uh, both sides have kicked 15 behind, so they have made them pay. But uh, for mine, I'm actually going to tip Parkside on this one. They are away, uh, pardon me, they are away from home. In fact, they're at Panton Hill this weekend, but I think, uh, just on current form, I, I think the two-week break might work in their favour, and I think uh, Panton Hill could perhaps be a bit rusty in that one. Yeah, look, uh, I think it's, it's, it's always hard for teams to uh, to travel up to Panton Hill, particularly when Panton Hill are... Uh, playing some really good footy, and, and that's what they're doing at the moment. They had Joffa Byron uh, just in, in glistening form last time they played, and, and look, when you when you put him alongside some of their other players, uh, particularly guys like uh, Will Box, uh, young uh, Kremborg, um, so look, they've got a really good side up there at Penn Hill. Um, Parkside, Dallas King, five goals on the weekend, and, and I think I've said before, he's just great to watch. He's so exciting. He's uh, He's got that little bit of magic about him, and... Um, I think uh, I think Penn Hill will probably just be a little bit too strong up there at Cracknell. Yeah, and interesting they're both both undefeated, which is obviously a great matchup to have. But uh, Parkside have beat Reservoir and St Mary's for those two, so two better sides. I think uh, Penn Hill had West Heidelberg, and I can't think of who they had round one, and they smashed West Heidelberg by 160 plus. I think when they back in round two, so which is yeah, obviously a bit of a bit of a different setup, but still two wins. And uh, Penn Hill had 78 scoring shots in their two games, which is. A nice return. If you're getting 36 shots on goal every match, you're gonna gonna be tough to stop. So, on that at home, I got Penton Hill by about a kick and a half. I think you're what's only that play? Yeah, I was gonna actually mention that. And also, you look at the last couple of fixtures they had last year. Of course, uh, in the elimination final where Parkside upset Penton Hill to some extent. Uh, they had the the round 18 fixture in the last game of the year where Panton Hill came from six goals down at three quarter time to win by three goals. So yeah. a massive turnaround. They've also had a three point game. Uh, during the course of last year, so recent history suggests we're in for an absolute cracker uh, this weekend, Joe. Before we go, 
Funny. I just want to, uh, on behalf of the NFL, just throw full support behind our, uh, our radio <laughs> commentary team for all you uh, people out there. The, the guys are, uh, are volunteers, so they give up their time. The only thing they get out of it is this crappy hoodie. <laughs> so um, just remember that if you're, uh, you're going to jump on Big Footy, which we love. I love Big Footy in here, uh, always on it. But um, if, uh, if you're going to jump on and, and pop blokes who, you, uh, who you, you've never walked across in your life, you wouldn't know them if they stood up in your porridge. Maybe just have a think about it. 